And God tells Moses, <laughs> five minutes, I'm, I'm going to land it. I swear. God, God tells Moses, take your staff. Remember that thing that I told you was in your hand last week? Oh, I'm, uh, remember that thing I told you was in your hand last week? Remember I told you how, to, how you could throw it down and it could become more than one thing? He says, take that thing and stretch it. Oh, wait a minute. There I go again. There, there go, there go. God creates moments that I've got to stretch. Why is it, God, that you're creating another moment for me that I've got to stretch? He says, because when you stretch, I'll stretch. Oh, God. I'm waiting on, waiting on you to stretch. He says, stretch your hand over the Red Sea. And it's going to part for you. Wait a minute. I said all of that to bring you to this. Because I've read this text for years. I've preached this text so many times I can't even count. I've taught this text so many times I can't even count. But remember I told you that you know what season that you're in by what comes up. Uh, I don't control my seasons, my revelation does. And when God gives me a revelation, it means that there's something about the season that I'm in that he's trying to get me to get out. And this is what, this is the revelation, watch. I thought that as soon as he waved his staff over the Red Sea, that it parted immediately. I thought, I thought. I, I grew up on watching the Ten Commandments in Charleston Heston. Yeah, yeah. That's what he did. He, he waved his staff in front, of the, in front of the Red Sea. And the water came apart immediately. But this text says something different. The Bible says that the cloud and the angel stood before them all night. Wait a minute. He says, he says there's an east wind that blew in and started to part the Red Sea all night. Which means that even though the enemy was immediate, the miracle, <laughs> the threat was immediate, oh God. But the miracle took all night. Oh God, I'm talking to somebody in here who sees and feels your threat as immediate. And you're trying to ask God, God, why is this taking all Oh, I, I see some of y'all looking at that text now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's in there. All night. Yeah, yeah. To the point where it said something to me. That miracles are timed resources. That your miracle has a time. There is a season for everything. And a time for every purpose uh, under heaven. See, the reason why it was easy for me to release LaDonna in this season. Because this is not just something that just happens. You guys missed a moment and a revelation. God is using her moment to give us a revelation. She has been doing something that was in her heart for a couple of years, but she couldn't do it fully because it wasn't the time. <laughs> but God had her working on something else while God had her th stuff that's in her heart being upheld. And God says, I'm going to bless your stuff by what you do in the seasons that's, that's waiting on your stuff to be revealed. So now if you work my stuff, while you're working my stuff, I'm getting things together for your stuff. I'm getting together donors and sponsors for your stuff. I'm getting business plans together for your stuff. I'm putting structure together for your stuff. You just don't see it because it's not time yet. It's not time yet. It's not time yet. Here is the principle you need to embrace here it is here it is miracles are timed resources and if you can wait for it oh, 
I said, if you can wait for it. <laughs> the, the, the threat is imminent. The threat is immediate. The threat, I see the threat. And God is still telling you, wait. 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 You're not noticing very, something very important. You're not noticing. I, I know you see the enemy and you see the threat, but you're, 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 you're missing. You're missing your miracle. You're missing your miracle because you're looking ahead of you and, and the miracle that's ahead of you is not moving fast enough. And, and you're trying to find faith to believe God for what's ahead of you because the miracle ahead of you is not moving fast enough. And God is saying, if you cannot believe uh, uh, me for the miracle to move fast enough ahead of you, then I want you to take a good look about what's behind you. Wait a minute. What's behind me? An angel and a cloud. Uh, my enemy is that close. We've been here all night and I'm still here. Uh, 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 my enemy is right on me. He wanted to kill me, but he can't kill me. I'm still here. I've got an enemy that I'm looking at that can't touch me. You missed your miracle. See, you missed your miracle. You missed your miracle. You missed your miracle. That stuff that was after you can't even touch you, and you missed your miracle. You're waiting on God to do something ahead of you, and God has already did something behind you. Can you praise God for what God did behind you? I know it hasn't manifested ahead of you yet, but can you see how God has blessed you? That when you look back over your life, <laughs> yes, yes, that when you look back over your life and you think things over, I can see how I was supposed to die right here, but you kept me living. I was see, I can see how I was supposed to fail right here, but I kept on coming. I can see how you were breathing down my back, devil, and you still didn't touch me. Because while I'm waiting on my miracle ahead of me, God will make reference to the miracle that he's got or that he's done. Everyone stand on your feet. I got to go. I got to go. I got to pray. I got to go. It's a timed miracle. See, <laughs> those of us who are prophetic, we live prophetically. That means we don't live by moments. We live by revelation. And the revelation that God gives us defines the moment. Is there anybody under the sound of my voice that's been having some things come up out of you? Some dreams, some ideas, vision has been coming up out of you. Some passion to do something. All of a sudden, that's been coming up out of you. Wave your hand at me. Wave your hand at me. Bless you. Keep your hand lifted. Keep your hand lifted. Keep your hand lifted. Any person who has been frustrated because you've been in a crisis and you're waiting on God to part the Red Sea, hadn't parted yet, and trying to keep your faith while you're in the crisis, while your enemy is looking at you, God told you, told you to go forward. Go forward into what? 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 What am I going forward into? Do you see what's ahead of me? And God is saying, that's all right. Just keep moving. Watch. Keep moving. Keep moving. Keep moving. Keep moving. And if you get to a place in which you can't move anymore, wait. Because I'm doing something with the wind. I'm creating another moment. I'm holding up things behind you, but I'm creating another moment in front of you. 
I went before you and created some things for you. You don't even know what I'm creating. There's a wind coming and you don't even see it. A wind is type and shadow of that thing that moves that you can't see. And he says that I'm creating something for you that you cannot see. I want you to believe in me because I called you into a crisis. I'm going to reveal you. This thing is going to define you. You will not fail in this crisis. I said you will not fail. Some of you are in an identity crisis. You will not fail. Some of you are in a resource crisis. You will not fail. Some of you are in a relationship crisis. You will not fail. Some of you are in a career crisis. You will not fail. Some of you are in a financial crisis. You will not fail. Everybody under the sound of my voice that got that crisis, wave your hand at me. Wave your hand at me. Listen, let, let, let me know that this is you. This is you. This is your word. Say, this is my word. This is my word. It's my word. I'm in a place and I'm not comfortable anymore. I, I, God is making me uncomfortable. There, there's stuff in me that needs to come out. And I'm not comfortable on the backside of the destiny. He's calling me into something that's greater than me. That, that I can't handle by myself. And I'm frustrated because I can't sleep anymore without doing it. I'm in a crisis. I'm in a crisis. I'm in a crisis. God told me to shift a long time ago and I feel the shift in my spirit and I don't know what to do because the Red Sea had the pardon yet and God is saying keep on working on it work on it keep working on it keep working on it keep working on it bit by bit keep working on it in a crisis I want to pray for you this is your word I want to pray for you because whether you know it or not when God gives you a word like this it means that your Red Sea is parting. Somebody say right now. You can't see it because it's inch by inch. You can't see it because you can't, you can't measure it. It's not quantifiable. You can't see it. But all I know is that if you take a nap, by the time you wake up, by the time you wake up in the morning, you will be able to walk across it. Because he said, I just can't part it. If I parted it and told you to walk across it immediately, you wouldn't be able to walk across it because it would be too muddy. He said, not only did I part it, but I hardened it. Oh, I got I to gotta, I gotta, I gotta go. Y'all y'all missed uh, not, not Not only did I part it, but I made it easy for you to walk on it. <laughs> and I made it harder for your enemy to pursue you. <laughs> that means the resources that was faster than your resources in your miracle, it won't matter. Won't matter. Your resources are faster. But in this God-given miracle, your resources are about to get slower. And I'm about to get faster. In my miracle, I'm better. Because God has called me for this. Stretch your hands up before the Father. I want to pray over you. Father, in the name of Jesus, come on. Father, in the name of Jesus, I decree and declare that you would bless your people right now. I pray, Father, that you would open up their eyes that so they can see. I pray, Father, that you would open up their hearts so they can receive. I pray, oh God, that you would open up their minds so that they can see. I pray, oh God, that you would cause for this crisis that they may find themselves in to be turned into a defining moment in their life. Father, you called us, birthed us, defined us, lead us in crisis situations. And I pray, oh God, that in this transition, because this is a transition. I feel a transition happening for many people that are under the sound of my voice. I feel a transition. I feel stuff coming up out of their heart. I feel businesses coming up out of their heart. Ideas coming up out of their heart, oh God, for the crisis that we find ourselves in right now. I, Father, I, I feel and sense, oh God, what you're doing. You're parting the, the Red Sea, oh God. You're blowing your wind right now, causing for things to part for people who's been praying, Lord, help, Lord, deliver. And God, I ask and pray that you would only give us patience 
Give us the grace to be able to wait for it. Give us the grace to not be able to freak out. Give us the grace to not be able to be, to, to, to not be frightened at it. Oh God, and I ask and pray that our enemies that are at our backs, <laughs> that are breathing down our backs, that can't touch us, I pray that we won't be afraid of them in Jesus' name, but that we will stand still. Oh God. Stand still. Stand still so that we can see your salvation stretched out over our situation in Jesus' name. Now, every leader under the sound of my voice that has received this word today, I dare you to give God praise for your crisis. Come on, confuse the devil. Tell, 